Welcome back to Rachel's Whimsical Arts. I am Miss Rachel and I wanted to show you another drawing on how to draw a beetle. There are lots of beetles out there. Uh, if you want to look them up online, you can, or in a book. I've got this book here. It's got so many beetles in here and different kinds. Uh, they're colorful. I love how there's different shapes and varieties and color that beetles have. Anything from a ladybug to a Goliath beetle uh, or a jewel beetle, which are really beautiful and shiny with um, greens and blues. So I'm going to show you the basic steps on how to draw a beetle and then how you can add color with watercolors. Okay, so here's the finished drawing of the beetle. It took a few steps and I'm going to show you all the steps uh, from the first steps here onto the final steps. Okay, so the first step is you want something straight like a ruler and a pencil and eraser. Those are your materials, paper, pencil, eraser, ruler. And if you don't have a ruler, you can use like the edge of a, of a book to be a straight edge. Uh, what I did first was I took my pencil and I drew lightly a straight line from corner to corner on my paper. And this paper isn't very big. It's only like five by seven, five and a half by seven inches. So after I drew that, then I took my uh, pencil and from not at the very edge of the paper of my, of my corner, but a little bit down, like about an inch and a half down, I drew an oval. So after you draw your oval shape, and I'm drawing lightly so I can erase it later, okay? Then you are going to draw a U shape. Now this is where I might use my ruler uh, because I want them to be parallel lines from the middle line. So Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a parallel line on this side. And I'm going to check to see if I can get it about the same. Oh, look, it's only about an inch from the edge. So about there. And then I'm going to draw another parallel line. So. Let's see if I can get this right. I dry lightly. Yep. And now after I've drawn those two parallel lines, so there's three lines, one in the middle and one on each side, then I'm going to turn this into a, a U shape. So I'm going to take my pencil and draw an arc right there. And you can turn the paper if it's helpful for you to draw upside down to get those shapes right. Artists tend to move the paper around to get their shapes. Uh, easier draw easily with an ease of drawing you can move your, your paper around it definitely helps so after I draw this now uh, my oval does need to be almost as wide as the U shape so I think I'm gonna erase and fix it just a little bit okay there we go I just want this oval be a little bit bigger okay so there's my oval there's my u shape the next step that you're going to want to do is from the top of the oval shape draw two lines like that and this is going to be the front part of the head of the beetle that gets reaches to the mandibles and then you will want to draw just lightly again the start of the antennae so uh, or and then uh, then after that below the oval shape you want to draw two lines so one's going here and one's going there I'm gonna erase these so you can see a little better and then after I draw those lines from the middle I'm going to draw an arch and I can already see where I may have done an error so I'm going to fix it. <laughs> my line in the middle of my oval of my head is not quite even so I'm going to fix that 
just like this. There we go. Okay. Then after you get those two steps down, you're gonna move to the rest of a little bit more of detail on the head. You're gonna get those eyes put in here. There's gonna be a big round eye there and a round eye there. And then you're going to move down here to this, this point. This kind of reminds me of like a, a, a bow tie right here. So below this point, see that? We're gonna make it look like a diamond. And then on the edges of this bow tie shape, I'm going to make this rounded here. So now I have the bottom of my beetle and the top of my beetle wings. I can erase these extra lines that go on the outside of those wings of the body. All right. So next you are, so we've, Finish this part, and we are going to be, and we, we are going to be putting in all the details for the beetle. Okay, don't put away that ruler; you're going to want it again. So now to draw the details, there's the legs and the head. Let's start with the top and work our way down. All right, so the top of the head. And this is where you might use your eraser a little more. I'm going to erase that line since it's going in the middle of his head. The top of the head, I'm doing this half C shape right there in the middle of his two eyes. Okay. And then I'm doing this V that goes above the diamond shape right there. And on the right and left sides of his head, I'm going to make these eye shapes. There's one, there's two. And for the body, we are going to use this ruler. I'm going to make four lines and they're going to, I'm going to try to get them to be parallel with the middle line of the back. So one, four lines on each side of his wing two, and I'm not making the lines go all the way down to the bottom or the top of the wing. There's three, four. There's four lines. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So there's the middle line. Make sure that you can see it. So I'm going to redraw it. There we go. So there are my four lines. And then for this part, eh, it's a little crooked there, but we're just going to go with it. For the next part, we're going to, besides before we connect those lines, is we're going to draw the start starting point of the legs. So right next to this curve right here, I'm going to draw just that part of the leg. That's all I'm drawing. I'm gonna do it on both sides. So it goes right here. Okay. And then I'm gonna draw the bottom legs. This is like the... So the bottom legs are going to go right about here, and they're gonna be angled. Here's the other one. And here, right, to help you see this better, I'm just making some of my lines darker so you can see it easier. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now that I've started the very outside lines of these things. I'm going to show you the next lines to make it more detailed. So we're going to go back up to the top of the head and we're going to make this 
be tiny little legs that go like a little wave. There's one wave. There's two waves. And then we're gonna do another wave that goes out from that wave out. This is like there. Okay. And to the legs that are down here, we're going to do another long cylinder shape. Comes to a point at the top though. So like that. And one on this side too. Now, the thing to keep in mind when you draw these legs is that they're going inward. See, they're not going up, they're going down. Same for the back legs. Okay. And then there's going to be this little part that's going to be like their foot. I think of it as a very long teardrop shape. Okay. There we go. All right. So now we're going to connect these lines. All right. So these lines are going to go in. So here's the first line. I'm going to draw it a little heavy so you can see it. So I'm retracing this just so you can see it. Okay. So this goes in like this, and then this long parallel line goes in to the point of the center of the wings. So that one goes in, it's curved in, and that goes down there. These are the grooves that for their, uh, their wings, because they do fly. So they're folded up. You're gonna do that on both sides. Guess what, we're almost done. And so you're gonna do these lines here, you're gonna make them go in, and then you're gonna do the same thing down here and make them go in. So after you get that done, the last step is, besides cleaning up with erasing any parts you might need, are these little grooves for the segments of their legs and their antennae, okay? See how there's little segments here? So that's the part we're gonna pay attention to. So here's some, what I'm going to do to make it easier for myself. I'm going to erase this line that's their, the bottom of their legs and the, a little bit so it's easier for me to draw over it and not have the lines showing through my pencil marks. So I'm just lightly erasing. I can still see the marks up close. And here's where I'm going to, I'm gonna use a different pencil, it's a little sharper. Here's what I'm gonna do next. Imagine these are little round segments. So I'm just drawing a tiny little like bubble connected to the next one. And they get smaller as they go down to the end. The antennae are also kind of like that. Tiny little bumps. But the feet, they're actually, I'm gonna turn my paper to make it easier. They're actually like little shapes that look kind of like hearts, but they're very narrow. See, so if you look at it upside down, it looks like a heart, or upside down, it doesn't look like a heart, but this way it does. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. So after I finish my legs, I'm gonna clean up any areas I need to with my eraser, get rid of those lines that are going down the center of the head and on the outside of the body. Okay, any cleanup you need to do. This is gonna make it look even better when you paint it with watercolors or if you color it, if you choose to color it with uh, pastels or colored pencils or markers, it's gonna look even better. So I cleaned it up. Now I'm gonna take my copy that I drew earlier and I'm gonna show you what it'll look like when you paint it. So I'm gonna use watercolors because I have 
lots of them and plenty of my students. Um, I teach with uh, elementary and middle school art and many of my students have watercolors at hand and a brush so that they can at least paint with some brushes. I'm going to use little brushes here. I'm not going to use big brushes. So you, you probably already have that in your uh, art kit that you have or supplies that you might have from, from home or from school. Um, I have a travel watercolor case, but your watercolors, if you have like Crayola watercolors or a palette of watercolors, any of them work. The other type of watercolors that you can use are liquid watercolors, okay, with a tube, and then you would squeeze it out and put it onto a palette and then blend it with water. Any of these will work. So next, I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to tape down my paper. Oh yeah, the paper that I'm using, it's a thick mixed media paper. You could use a watercolor paper, which is textured. It looks kind of like this. So watercolor paper is thicker and it has um, the way that it's, it's made. They, it's almost like handmade, the way that they make watercolor paper. It's thicker and it's more absorbent for water and watercolors needs that. But the mixed media paper that's like from your art journal or your drawing journal that's thicker, that will work fine. Now, a uh, student asked me a while ago, hey, how do I keep my paper from bu being bumpy and bubbling um, and curling when I'm painting it with watercolors? Well, you can't prevent all the water from doing that because it's the nature of the beast, so to speak. Water will eventually, if you have too much water puddled anywhere, it will warp and bump, create bumps and ridges in your paper. So what I do to try and prevent too much of that from happening is I tape my drawing onto a board or a table surface that is my art table or a desk that I can put tape on. And this is painter's tape. You can also use um, masking tape, which is like an off-white color. And the reason I'm taping this down is it should prevent it from bumping too much. It'll still have a little bit of warping, but uh, you can just let it dry. And then after it dries from the watercolors, you can take your paper and press it in between books, some heavy books on top of it, and it'll lay, lay it flat again. So you can do that. So here's what I'm gonna do with my watercolor. I have these brushes that I can use, or I can use my travel kit brush. Either one will work. Um, if you use paints or colors before, you probably know that you don't want to use the darkest color first. You want to use your white light color. So I'm going to put some white down. And watercolors are fun because you can put water on the paper and then you can add color to it. I am just gonna make up what color I want my beetle to look like. It does not have to be a realistic color of beetle. I could compare it to a, a beetle or a creature that I see an uh, insect online if I wanna make it look like one that I've seen online. But um, I'm gonna use blues and greens. I'm not really gonna use very much in yellow. I might use a little bit of yellow on the the wings. I might make their eyes black later after the blue dries. The other thing about watercolors you want to be careful with is you might need to do it in stages, okay? Um, because if I try to put all of my colors down at once right away, they could blend together. Or so if I do stages, like I'm going to do the head and then I'm going to leave the middle part alone so it dries a little bit before I put any color in between that head area and the, the abdomen or the wings. So here's my thought. I'm going to use different shades of blue on this guy. I like the idea of using multiple blues and greens. And because my brush is damp and got, has blue on it, I'm going to use the yellow on my other brush. 
So I'm gonna add a little bit of highlights of yellow, but not everywhere. And I want it to blend with this blue, this phthalo blue that I have on here. So I'm gonna leave that alone. That's gonna be the highlight. I'm gonna leave that. Now, add a little more of my other green blue, the phthalo blue. You can choose to put your brush of color onto the paper without adding any water. Like I'm not putting any water down on the paper first before I add color. And that's what this looks like on the left hand side of this. The middle of this beetle right here, just like the head, I put water down first and then I put the color down and it started to blend those colors together. Okay. So when you're doing this, just have fun with it. Enjoy the process and in making this insect and see how it looks. If you get too much color or water, you can take a paper towel and you can dab it. Dab is just like pressing and absorbing the moisture and not swiping. If you swipe, it's gonna smear and it could hurt the paper and rub and pill the paper because it's wet now. So if I go like this, it's gonna damage it. All right, so here is my beetle. I'm gonna finish painting it later and I will share pictures on the feed for the YouTube channel for you to check out. I am going to add, I think I might, I might add some darker lines to the wings, either with marker when it's dry or let it dry and then go over it very carefully and slowly with, um, with my brush for lines, okay? So, Enjoy this, have fun with it. I'd love to see and share what kinds of beetles you draw and paint from. You can share in the comments or you can contact me on social media. I use both Instagram and Facebook for Rachel's Whimsical Arts and you can follow along. I do have, um, every week on Friday, I put up new videos for you to, to watch for how to do arch projects. Um, they're usually pretty basic and simple with supplies, so maybe you can do this from things you have at home. Uh, painting, if you don't have paints, you could use markers. You could color it with that instead. I know a lot of us are staying home right now, and uh, we need to be safe with uh, quarantine for this spring. Uh, but you can still be creative, and you can still make things and enjoy the moment. Think I, like, I liked focusing on beetles and butterflies this last couple weeks because spring is happening. Plants are growing and flowers and people are gardening. So what better way to think about spring than the bugs that help grow our garden and our food and our flowers. Thank you so much for coming and I hope to see you again. You have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.